In the diagram below, the graphs of f of x is equal to cos x plus q and g of x is equal to sin x plus p are drawn on the same system of axes for negative 240 to positive 240. The graphs intersect at 0 and half and negative 120 and negative half and 240 and negative 1. So this is our graph, our Cartesian plane. 6.1, determine the values of p and q. Okay, so p being our horizontal shift and q being our vertical shift. P is a horizontal shift, it's inside the bracket. Q is a vertical shift, it's outside of the bracket. So let's have a look. Okay, so let's start with P first, how that relates to our G graph and sine. So here's our G graph. Remember, the sine graph is meant to begin at the origin. Okay, the mother graph of the sine graph, it begins at the origin, it begins at zero degrees. Now all of a sudden it's moved here. Now it's starting at negative 30. So it has shifted 30 degrees. This is a leftward shift, so that's actually a positive shift. Yeah, I know we move back negative 30 degrees, but left shifts are positive. You know that from functions. Well, I, I hope you know that from functions. So P is equal to 30. Now, if we take a look at Q, our cos mother graph is, be is meant to begin at 1. All of a sudden, it's now beginning at half. That is a downward shift. Downward shifts are indicated as negative, so that's minus a half. Therefore, Q is equal to minus a half. 6.2, determine the values of X in the interval, negative 240 to 240, for which F of X is greater than G of X. Just going to clean the screen quickly with some jig. So where is F of X greater or higher than our G graph? So there's our F graph. It's below G of X, below G of X, below, 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 below. All of a sudden, it's above. It's above. It's above. It's above. Boom. Then... At zero degrees, it goes below, 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 and then intersects. So it's only from this portion here. So from negative 120 to zero, that's it. So X is an element from negative 120 to zero. That's it. That's how you would write it in interval notation in set builder. Negative 120 degrees is less than X and X is less than zero. 6.3, describe a transformation that the graph of G has to undergo to form the graph of H, where H of X is equal to negative cos X. Really interesting question here. I'm just going to clean the screen. So that the graph of G must undergo to get graph H, where H is equal to negative cos X. So this is pretty interesting. It would mean that the graph of G, this G graph here, it would have to shift 60 degrees to the left, here, here, and here, from negative 30, Oh, whoops, let me just uh, correct my mistake. Everybody makes mistakes. So from negative 30, it would need to shift 60 degrees. So that's 30 degrees, that's 60 degrees. So it, it would need to shift to negative 90, and it would then need to be reflected about the x-axis. Because if it, if it was reflected about the x-axis, there would be a change in y. And you see, there's our change for y, that negative cos x. So in terms of our g graph, it's currently at x minus sorry, x plus 30. It's currently at x plus 30. If it shifts another 60 degrees, that's going to be another positive shift. It's going to be equal to x plus x plus 90. Or if we just were to rewrite the whole thing again, that's going to be sine 90 plus x. Sine 90 plus x, that's a co-function and that's how we get the cos x. But we don't want just cos x, everybody. We want negative cos x. And in order to get this negative, it must be shifted. Sorry reflected about the x-axis because if it's reflected about the x-axis we get that change in y that we were talking about and that's the negative so 60 degrees to the left to get sine 90 plus x utilize a co-function and to get the negative we would also need to reflect it about the x-axis and that's it for the question really nice uh, 6.3 wasn't all that easy um, needed a bit of co-function understanding shift understanding as well because we're manipulating it into the co-function. And then, well, that's just equal to cos x. How do we get the negative cos x? Now we've got to reflect it about the x-axis. So there's a change in y. Remember, if we reflected it about the y-axis, there would have been a change in x. And that's completely different than that x would have changed. But yeah, hope that makes sense.